I'm going to tell you everything about REC today. REC stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And it's a discipline that's employed for generative AI and building your own generative AI applications. And the R in REC stands for retrieval. So what are we retrieving here? We are retrieving your private data. That's what it's all about. How do we get your private data attached to your generative AI applications? So it starts, of course, by collecting your, your private data. So the private data, this could be your images, video, all kind of unstructured data, binary data, documents, PDFs, whatsoever. All of that is collected. And then it is prepared. So that basically, you will see the later steps can make use of it. So there's a whole bunch of steps for data preparation entailed here. So this is things like, for instance, filtering. Right? Because you may have data that you do not want to have, like if it has a certain profanity or if it's basically not a high quality that you want to use for your applications. You may want to cleanse it. You want to make, take out noise of this document. It doesn't matter for your purposes here. You may want to condense the volume of this data to more digestible fragments by summarizing it. Yeah, and then you may, if the data is too large in terms of the documents are too large, you may want to digest it, make it digestible for your whole application workflow by chunking it, right, into what are the nuggets of information in your document that are a unit on its own. You chunk this data. Okay, now you've prepared of this data, and now you can store it somewhere for the process. The next thing you do after you've prepared this data and stored it, you're going to compute embeddings for these documents, also called vector embeddings. So this is a process that takes all of your prepared data and produces these so-called vectors or vector embeddings, which are nothing else than arrays of numeric data, floating point data. And they are representing the semantics of each individual data piece, each chunk that you have stored here. It's a semantic representation as, numer as numbers, basically. Okay, you have stored, you have now computed those. You need to put them somewhere. So you store them into some form of data, database data store. Right? But that's not enough, just storing them. Because if you want to make use of them later on, this needs to happen in a very efficient manner. That's why you employ techniques for indexing. More specifically, we talk about vector embeddings, vector indexing. So you produce, you compute a vector index. In addition to these embeddings themselves that you have stored, you're creating this vector index. So all of that happens in preparation of your actual consumption of this data. So this happens in advance, in the background, not interactively as you're interacting with your generative AI application. But let's talk about this now. How does your generative AI application actually consume and interact with this data? So it starts by the generative AI application sending a request for data generation, right? a so-called prompt, as it is called in the language of generative AI. You can think of prompt as a query. It's a query, basically a piece of text, a question, if you like. Right? You're like in a, in, if you're using a generative AI application like a GPT application, right, you may just ask a question. That is the query, the prompt that we're talking about. The next step that needs to happen here is that this query, which is really just a piece of text that is sent by the application, it needs to be also computed and translated into these vector embeddings. Right? We are calling is also we are encoding this query. Right? We are encoding this query and we are producing again such a vector. And this is now being used to further basically send this vector that you have now produced to your vector store, that this, to this database where you have stored your vector in order to perform a so-called similarity search. And the way this works now is this is a vector that is representing the semantics of this query. And we have stored vectors that are representing the semantics of this data that we've prepared in this database. This similarity search now is employing, is using these vector indexes to do this very interactively, very fast. 
which is very important because the user may be waiting for a response in front of the chat application. The similar similarity search now accelerated through the index returns vectors. So this is now very important. What it returns is just, quote unquote, the vectors that are representing this data, that are semantically representing the actual data that is most related to the question that has been asked, to this vector that has been put as input. So that's why another step needs to happen, which is we need to now retrieve the actual data, these documents. So we're retrieving the documents that we have stored here now interactively based on these vector embeddings that we have found. And only then we can piece everything together. We can take the retrieved data and we can augment the query that has been sent, this question, with this data. So we have retrieved it, we are augmenting it, and now we are sending it to this large language model to generate an output. So now the, now the generation happens. Right, so generated output basically is sent back to the application. Retrieval, augmented generation. Right, that's the, the term, that's what, uh, these are the steps that we have just walked through. Now when we look at all of that, obviously that's a lot of things that are happening. So let's see what kind of integrated systems are there or what things we could put in, in the integrated system. And you've already seen that I've drawn this into a database box. And this is by intention because this is basically what you find today already as vector databases. Vector databases are doing exactly that. They store vector data, they index it, and they do accelerated similarity search with these indexes. That's what the vector database is about. However, when you look at this, we can actually integrate more of that into a common box if we wanted to, to simplify the consumption and, and building of applications uh, with Rack. And specifically, we're talking about this delineation here. Anything that's below here is what we call an AI database, a system that is serving all of that. It allows you to store prepared data, AI data, documents, prepared chunks of documents, images, and so on, and does all of the embedding computation, vectorization, indexing of that, and then also automatically allow to run queries in clear, in clear text and returning actual documents to the caller. That's an AI database. Now we can go one step further. If we take all of these things and try to put them all into one box, we would call this an AI data platform. Right, a platform does all of that for the, for the solution developer who wants to build this box here. So with that actually, retrieval augmented generation, RAG, which has emerged actually effectively in the market today as, the, as a standard pattern of how to build generative AI application. What it actually does, actually it, it turns AI workload into database workload. And this is an explanation why databases actually are such a critical factor nowadays for generative AI, because this REC pattern that we've seen here actually turns AI workload into effective database workloads.